Just a little humor, brothers, but it's true. She's been made to believe if she breastfeeds the children, she'll lose her form and I ain't got time. I got to go to work. So she pulled her breasts out the baby's mouth, put a plastic bottle with a formula in there. Who made the formula? What's in the formula? I don't know. Give it to the baby. But what God put in the breast, that's the real formula, brother. And if you know how to eat and you know how to think, you can pass right through your breast health and the chemistry of an enlightened mind infused in the milk. White folk know this. Take you off the breast, put you on a bottle, and then give you a teddy bear to play with. Give you things to play with. Mama ain't got no time to spend time with you, put you in a daycare center where people look at you as a number like they do in prison. They don't have no real love for you, it's money. So they mistreat you while grandma knew how to love you. She knew how to take our foolishness and sit us down and smack us upside the head and put a Bible reading on us. Grandma and grandpa was there, but mama don't have the time now. And the young mothers today, they're out of time completely. And so the babies are growing up cold, being wedded to things. Sit down in front of the TV. I ain't got no time. Look at Bonnie. <laughs> oh, you got this big, dumb-looking thing? I love you, you love me. Love me. <laughs> Growing up, our children are madness. Because you don't have time. Sit down in front of the TV, I'm busy. What you busy doing? Looking at the other TV. New Orleans, brothers, it's going on all over the country, man. And when you grow up with nothing human, not the warmth of your mother's breast, not the care of a loving father, then you got to go to school and learn false things about yourself as a black person or nothing about yourself. Then you end up growing to dislike who you are. You just look at your color. Oh, why, uh, Ma, why, why am I black? Because everything in the society that's moving ahead is white or near white. And especially in a place like New Orleans, you know. and they pit us against each other, take our different colors and pit us one against the other. So now you're growing up cold, unloved, unwanted, and then you're angry and you're filled with pain and you don't even know what's at the core of it. You're a man, but, but you can't prove who you are. You lay down in your bed and you dream about your own greatness, but when you awaken, reality sits in. You don't find peace in the house, so you go out in the street and you find some more brothers look just like you, angry just like you, cold just like you, my man. And whoever thumps the hardest, become the leader. It's not who got the most intelligence. After you get whooped, 
You say, well, that's my man. <laughs> then, this is the same when we were coming up, older ones, but today it's a little different. Now, they say, well, since we can't control them with religion or education, let's put the drugs in. Now, brothers, hardly a brother in this audience has not experienced getting high. There's hardly one of us in this audience who has not experienced drugs. Hardly one. That's something to think about, man. When I was coming up, reefer was there. I knew where the reefer man was. Well, hell, if I knew where he was, the police should have known where he was. <laughs> if I, as a child, knew where to go to buy hashish and ganja, the police knew. But the police didn't give a damn as long as it was you and me getting high. Cause didn't nobody care about black people and they don't give a damn about you today. If you don't care about yourself, black man, there's nobody to care about you but God. Do you think they cry at night when you kill one another? They say that's one less nigga we gotta deal with. The hospitals have no respect for you because every weekend it is we who are, who are putting ourselves in the hospital, cutting, shooting, destroying one another to the joy of our enemies. Let's deal wisely with them. When you got knowledge, you have a responsibility. Jesus said, him to whom much is given, much is not only expected, much is required. We, as black people, have to lift the veil of ignorance from off of our people. But before we can lift the veil of ignorance from our people, some of the poison Take your time. That's right. uh -huh. of white supremacy on, that we have been educated into and have become a part of has to be removed from our educators. <laughs> we lose a thousand or more children every year in making his dropouts. It is estimated that 35,000 citizens in Macon and Bibb County cannot read or write. Plus there are another 13,000 who are termed as functionally illiterate. When you can't read and write and when you're a functional illiterate in a highly technological age, you don't fit. That's right. All right. And as factories close and jobs move out of the cities into the countryside and out of the country into foreign countries, then you are standing by the old factory gate looking for a job because you're not prepared. And since in America, white men feel threatened by black men. They don't give good jobs to many black men. They give good jobs to black women. They don't mind seeing a black woman downtown making going to her office job dolled up in the morning with her briefcase in her hand left her husband at home 
looking at television. Tell me when I get home, baby, how the world turns and what's happening at General Hospital. Tell me when I get home about all my children. But I got to go to work now, honey. And on the job, white men are telling dirty jokes. And she's laughing. White men patting on her, feeling on her. And she know if she lose her job, you won't eat. The children won't eat. So she submits to these kinds of advances. And we as black men walking around powerless. Yes, sir. Somebody wants your daughter. In Georgia, they take your daughter. Yes, sir. They used to just ask you to send your daughter out. That's right. And some of us would do just that. Uh -huh. Quaking in fear. But if a man cannot protect his children, the man ought not to have no children. But abortion is not the answer. Work is the answer. Abortion is not the answer. Making a future for your children is the answer. Abortion is not the answer. Making up your mind that the God who created all of this created a means for us to make a way for ourselves. And he will help us to make a way out of no way if we want to make a way out of no way. We have noticed that in 1990, Rape, robbery, homicide, burglary is up in Macon and Bibb County. There have been over 10 murders thus far. 22 rapes, 85 robberies and assaults, 155 assaults, pardon me, 956 Larceny, 3,066 burglaries, 34 arsons, and 312 auto thefts. And who you think is being arrested for most of this? Once every 24 minutes, somebody's killed in America. Once every 24 minutes, somebody's killed in America. And whether you believe it or not, black people are dying all over this country by the hands of their own people. You may be angry if a white policeman shoots down one of our young black brothers, and that's something to be angry about. And the NAACP, the Urban League, church leaders get together and pick it. Mm -hmm. Listen. But every weekend, All right. and through the week, All right. we send our own to the hospital and to the graveyard. Mm -hmm. No picket. Right. Nobody saying nothing. We just bury our dead and keep on going. But it's only when a white person kills one of us that we get upset. We ought to be more upset when we kill one another.
in America today, a white female has one chance in 606 of being murdered. I'm going to say that again. In America today, a white female has one chance in 606 of being murdered. A white male has one chance in 186 of being murdered. In America, a black female has one chance in 124 of being murdered. But a black male has one chance in 21 of being murdered. Count 21 black men and one of those 21 is scheduled to die by murder. And 95% of all of the homicides of our people are committed by black people on black people. We have never been this bad. Even during the harshest times in slavery, we never killed each other like this. Lord knows in Georgia we suffered much, but we never committed suicide like young black men are committing suicide today. What is happening to black people that we are so filled with self-hatred? Our children are so cold that they are killing their brothers and sisters, killing their elderly, robbing them for their little pension check. What is happening to us as a people that our mothers and fathers who nursed us when we were young in Georgia, but now that they are elderly, you put them in old age homes, let them die in the loneliness of a nursing home because you can't be bothered looking after your own mother. But your mother was bothered changing your nasty diapers, washing your stinking backside, nursing your hungry lips. But now that you are strong, you let your mother die in some old age home. Let your grandmother rot in some old age home because you're too busy now. What is happening, black people? Preacher, what are we doing? Where is the effect of our preaching? What kind of Jesus Christ are you preaching when your people look like this and act like this? something wrong making it's not all our fault but we have to shoulder a lot of the responsibility white folk put us in this mindset but we don't have to stay there If God gave Daniel to the Hebrews and Moses to the children of Israel, when will God give somebody to us? And my Sunday school teacher couldn't answer. And it wasn't that I'm a racist or a radical, but I did not like the hypocrisy in the church. Now listen to me, Christians, please. 
white Christians say they love Jesus. But in this city, when I got here, if I went to the movie, I had to go all the way up to the top of the Carolina Theater because I couldn't sit where I wanted to sit. If I went to church, I couldn't sit on the main floor. How in the hell can you tell me that you represent Jesus Christ? whom you say is the epitome of love with the hate that you have shown all the days of your life for your black Christian neighbor. You pastors, many of you are such hypocrites. Wait a minute. You want integration everywhere, but not in your church. You got a black church and a black congregation. Why isn't your church integrated? Because you were in First Baptist with white folk, and you weren't happy, so you left and formed Second Baptist Church. Talk back to me. You were in the Methodist church and they mistreated you so you formed the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Talk back to me. You have never been treated right nowhere you have gone by the racist-minded so-called white Christians. Now I maintain that you are sick. need a doctor to analyze and diagnose your mental illness and prescribe a cure for you. And the cure is not in Jung. The cure is not in Freud. The cure is not in Nietzsche. The cure is not in Machiavelli. The cure is in God and the connection of earth with heaven again. The sickness of white racism. I'm better than you because I am white. How does that make one better? How dare you impose on your own mind the sick arrogance that you are better because of some physical characteristic. But at the same time, you're an enslaver, a kidnapper, a raper, a robber, a butcher, a denier of other human beings, equal justice, education. You make education for the privilege. of a human being and then want to be recognized as human? Because religion as a body has failed the people. And politics as a body has failed the people. Whether it's democracy, whether you call it communism, socialism, fascism, I don't care what form of government you have. It all has faith. Behold then, I make all things new. The thing that God has asked the people to be ready for and to look for is the kingdom of God. It is a government under the rules and laws of God. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, 
God has caused life and death. Death facilitates life. Look at the leaves when they fall from the trees. They look so beautiful in summer, but when fall comes, you see them lose the ability to hold on to the limb that is feeding life to them. And as life begins to go down, the sap begins to go down in the tree, then the limb can't feed life to the little leaves. So the leaves weaken and fall. The leaves cover the earth. Some of you rake the leaves and burn the leaves, but God wastes nothing. Listen up. Everything that he creates, he's just a perfect economist. I don't know why y'all can't balance your books or your budget. You really need to let God show you how. Because everything with him is balanced. He has no deficit. <laughs> the leaves go back into the earth and enrich the soil, bringing up a better life next time. See? If you were to live forever, you wouldn't need sperm. Teach. Teach me. Sisters wouldn't need an egg. If you were meant to stay here forever, why give me a sperm to reproduce? The earth can't hold but so many. Go ahead, Go ahead, Go ahead, Go ahead yeah. 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 So death must come. But look at the beauty of life and the beauty of death. What are you saying, Farrakhan? Just listen. <laughs> Beloved, look. God has put this whole universe on an evolutionary path toward perfection. Yes, sir. Go on, man. Go. The word that you call in English Lord, He is the Lord. In Arabic, it's called Rab. From it, the Jewish teachers are called Rabbi or Rabbi. Rabbi is one who nurtures or nourishes a thing, making it attain stage after stage until it reaches its eventual perfection. So each generation should move us closer and closer to perfection and closer and closer to God. Since God is perfect, then man is on his way to God.